hopefully you can tell after watching the example videos that solving something with elevation and depression is as simple as being able to draw the picture, fill in the information that you know, and then using trigonometry to solve for what you need. So always deciding, am I gonna be using sine, cosine, or tangent? And then I'm setting up the problem and solving just like we've been doing with the other trig problems. Elevation and depression problems are just one of many ways that trigonometry is useful to our world. I wanna show you guys today how we can implement this trigonometry skill in real life. Um, something that we would have done in class is used something to measure an angle and figure out the heights of various objects in our school. Usually we figure out the height of the PAC, the height of the scoreboard, the height of the stands. Um, so I'm going to show you how you can use this and if you happen to have a protractor at home that you can use this as well, um, you might try to see if you can figure out the height of your house or something like that around town. A transit is commonly used to measure angles of elevation and depression in today's fieldwork. In the past, people have used things like astrolabes and sextants to measure angles of elevation and depression. I'm not quite as fancy as having an actual transit or an astrolabe or sextant, but I do have a homemade way to figure out the angle of elevation or depression. It is gonna have a little bit of human error to it, but it's gonna do pretty well for what we need it to do. So the straw here is basically the eyelet where I'm gonna be looking at whatever I want to figure out the angle to. So if I'm trying to figure out the angle of elevation to something, I'm gonna look through the straw to where I can see whatever I'm looking at. And then using the weight at the bottom, I'm going to see how that differs from where it was hanging before. Notice that if I'm looking straight forward, if it'll stop, um, that it's going to hang right at 90 degrees. So I'm trying to figure out when I have that angle of elevation, how far is it differing from the 90 degrees? So if it's hanging right here and I stop it right there, I'm just going to notice that I'm at about 80 degrees and it really doesn't matter whether I'm looking at the bigger or the smaller number because my goal is to figure out how much it differs from 90. So if I have it here hanging at 80 degrees that means that it's a 10 degree angle of elevation from where it was at before. If I have an angle of depression, so say I'm standing up high and I'm looking down at something, again I'm going to be looking at where it's hanging. It looks like about 110 and I'm just gonna say that, okay, that's 20 degrees from 90, so that's a 20 degree angle of depression. To see how this really works, we're gonna go on a little field trip. Are you ready? Hey, you made it! We are at the site of the world-renowned Claremore Water Tower, and we're gonna use our trig skills that we've learned to figure out the height of the water tower, or at least get a pretty good estimate. So the first thing that I'm going to do is use my homemade astrolabe to figure out the angle of elevation from my line of sight to the very top of the water tower. And this is a little bit tricky because it's very windy out here, but I'm going to do the best that I can, making sure that that eyelet is right on the top of the water tower and then try to stop my string right here to where it's hanging as close as I can be to that angle of elevation. Notice that it's about at 60, but we still need to subtract that from 90. So from my line of sight to the water tower is about 30 degrees angle of elevation. Next, if we're gonna be using trigonometry, we not only need an angle, but we need one other side length of this triangle. I can't quite figure out the length between me and the top of the water tower, but I can estimate the length from where I'm at to the base of the water tower. I found that one of my strides was about two feet. So 
So counting my strides as I walked, I ended up going 100 strides from where I was at, looking through the astrolabe, and being at the base of the water tower. Um, I did not do that on purpose, so 100, very nice. Um, remember, I do have to multiply that by the length of my stride. So since the length of my stride was two feet, and then I took 100 strides, that means I was 200 feet from the water tower. Now that we've finished our field work, it's time to do some trigonometry. Before we do any trig, it's always smart to draw a picture of what we're talking about here. So here's me and the water tower. What we have found is that the distance from me to the water tower is about 200 feet. We've also figured out that from my line of sight to the top of the water tower is about a 30 degree angle of elevation. So now what we're trying to figure out is how tall is this entire water tower. And keep in mind, like some of those videos were saying, this is only going to give me my height from my eyesight to the top of the water tower. So when we're done, we're going to have to add my height. I'm going to go ahead and estimate that the height of me from my feet to my line of sight is going to be about five feet. I'm five foot three, so that's close enough for what we're doing. Okay, so now we're deciding if I have this angle here and I've got the opposite side and the adjacent side, I have to decide what trig function to use. So the trig function that uses opposite and adjacent is tangent. So I'm setting up my tangent of 30 degrees would have to be in the ratio of X to 200, opposite over adjacent. I'm multiplying, cross multiplying, or multiplying both sides by 200. So using my calculator, we've got 200 times tangent of 30 degrees. We're gonna get that it's about 115.5 feet. So we've got X is about 115.5. And then remember, we always have to add in that extra height at the end. So adding about five feet for my height to my line of sight is gonna give us about 120.5 feet. And that is the height of the water tower. Some of you may have noticed that this triangle ended up being a 30, 60, 90. I did not plan that, but it did end up being that way. So for this, we actually didn't need to use trigonometry. I can use the fact that this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And since I have that long leg to find the short leg, I would need to divide by radical three. And using our calculators, that's gonna get you the same thing. It's still gonna get you 115, sorry, 115.5 feet. And then you're still gonna be adding that five feet to it to get what we got the first time. 